Welcome to session 12 of our ANSYS Fluent course for beginners. Today's topic is hydrogen enriched methane light combustion, which represents an important advancement in combustion technology. Before we delve into the specifics, I want to reference terms and introduction to combustion, a cornerstone text that will guide our understanding of the fundamental concepts. Combustion is at the heart of energy conversion and understanding its principles is crucial for any engineer working in this field. Throughout the session, we'll build our knowledge step by step, starting from the basic principles and moving toward more complex interactions. This thesis transport module will be one of our tools, but first, let's ensure we have a solid grasp of fundamental combustion concepts. Combustion, why it's so important in our world? First, let me give you the basic definition. Combustion is simply a sequence of chemical reactions that release heat when fuel and oxidizer react with each other. During this process, the original substances convert into new ones while releasing energy. Now, here's something remarkable. About 85% of all energy we produce worldwide comes from combustion processes. That's huge. This really shows how much we rely on combustion in our daily lives. Looking at where combustion is used, you will find it anywhere. In power plants, we use gas turbines and boilers. In transportation, we have internal combustion engines in our cars. Industries use furnaces and thrusters for various processes. What's interesting is how diverse the applications are. From traditional uses like boilers and burners, to more specialized areas like biomedicine and propulsion systems. Even in environmental science, understanding combustion is key for addressing climate change and energy sustainability. These applications show why it's so important for engineers to understand combustion principles. Now let's break down the fundamental concepts of combustion that we need to understand. First, let's talk about chemical reactions. There are two main types we deal with in combustion. First, exothermic reactions, which release energy in form of heat and light. Think of a flame burning. Secondly, endothermic reactions, which actually absorb energy from their surroundings. When we look at basic reaction types, there are three main categories. Synthesis reactions, where elements combine to form new compounds. Decomposition reactions, where compounds break down into simpler substances, and replacement reactions, where elements swap places with each other. Now here's a really important concept, stoichiometry. This tells us exactly how much oxidizer we need for complete fuel burning. Think of it as the perfect recipe for combustion. We also use something called the equivalence ratio, shown by the Greek letter phi. This ratio tells us if we're using more or less fuel than the perfect recipe calls for. Then phi is greater than 1, we have what's called a rich mixture, too much fuel. When phi is less than 1, we have a lean mixture, not enough fuel. On the right side of the slide, you can see some helpful diagrams showing these differences reaction types. Notice how in synthesis reactions, A and B combine to form AB, while in replacement reactions, elements swap positions. These concepts form the building blocks for understanding more complex combustion processes. And in this way, we can perform a structured grid. I guess we're done, so let me check it one more time. So it will be all set. It's perfect and we can process it. So before going on, I want to uh, actually define and label a name for each of these boundaries. And let's just start from this one. So uh, this one is called the inlet fuel. This one is the inlet of the air. This was clearly mentioned in the paper. As you can see in here, uh, the eddy dissipation concept or EDC model is implemented for tooling chemistry interaction. And this is our reason to employ this as well. Very well. So uh, I guess we're done with this uh, model section and also the material section. It is time to employ our boundary conditions. 
So first of all, we know that uh, because we just labeled these axes uh, as axes, the software automatically detected an axis uh, of rotation. Then it's turn of the inlet of the air. And as you can see, the velocity inlet to boundary condition is specified. Well, think of rituals as your simulation's way of showing you how well is solving the equations. Every time Fluent runs an iteration, it's trying to solve the equations for mass, momentum, and energy conservation. The rituals show us how much error is left in these solutions, basically how far we are from perfect conservation. When you start the simulation, these rituals usually start pretty high, but as the solution progresses, you want to see them dropping down. In most cases, we're looking for residuals to fall below 10 to the power minus 3 or even minus 4. This is like saying our error is less than 0.1%. By default, Fluent sets a specific convergence criteria for different equations. These are absolute criteria. Think of them as the finish line. When our residuals drop below these values, Fluent considers the solution converged. However, uh, this is really important to understand. These default values aren't always what we need. For higher accuracy simulations, we might want to tighten these criteria. Now, there's something really important I want to understand about convergence. You will know your solution is converging when these residuals start leveling off. They're not dropping anymore. But here's a pro tip. Don't just rely on residuals alone. It's good practice to also monitor things like mass flow rate or pressure drop to make sure they're stabilized too. Regarding all of this info, I want to add another zero in here to increase the accuracy for all of the equations. Very well, so you can see about 1,300 iterations were performed to reaching the residuals uh, I mean, the convergence criteria that is defined in residuals, the software automatically stopped the solution. Simply as that, you can have the temperature distribution. And as you can see, we know that uh, at the entrance, the temperature of the fuel and air were uh, 298, I guess. But uh, let's see where the reaction taking place. Uh, I guess if we just uh, start sh showing the uh, methane distribution, you can see that. And uh, also the uh, species and of course the methane could be a great option in here to see uh, where the actually, yeah, as you can see in here, after 30 centimeters uh, from the entrance, we wouldn't have any more methane and uh, the rest of the chamber uh, there is no uh, methane for taking and reacting with the other species. And this actually uh, very important when it comes to designing the chamber.